This is a setup demonstration video for the Vaporesso Gen 220 watt output device. Inside the box, in addition to the device itself, you will find the tray that the device was resting in, as well as a user manual, a very robust micro USB cable, and product warranty information from the manufacturer. Let's take a look at the device itself. The Vaporesso Gen mod is hearkening back to some of the older mods that were a little bit simpler um, and a little bit more sleek in design in this case. You've got on the top here a centered 510 connector to attach your atomizer of choice. As well as on the front face here, you have your fire button, the LCD screen, and three buttons, as well as your micro USB port. If you do choose to charge this device by micro USB, be aware that it is a two cell device. And so when charging by cable, you're going to want to rotate your batteries every time you recharge it. Although best practice would be to get an external bay charger. Another word of note about the 510 connection on the top of the device is that it does protrude from the device just a little bit. And that does mean that when you attach your atomizer, there will be a slight gap between the top of the device and your atomizer, which can prevent some of the dents and scratching that can happen from screwing atomizers on and off over time. To install the batteries, which are sold separately, there is a small tab area where you can get your fingernail in to remove the side panel that exposes your battery sled. I already have batteries installed in this for the purposes of the demonstration, but it is clearly marked. You have a battery ribbon to help you remove the ribbons. You just tug to get them to release. And it is clearly marked which end on each side is the positive and negative contact for your batteries. So I'll go ahead and pop these back in. As always with spring-loaded contacts when installing your batteries, you do want to make sure to butt the battery up against the end that has the spring-loaded uh, contact and depress the spring far enough that you can slide the battery in without it scratching along the end of the other contact. And then we'll simply take the battery door, which has sturdy magnets on the top and bottom, as well as a little cautionary tail here, um, or advisory rather, to forewarn you against using damaged wrapped batteries and to make sure that your batteries are otherwise in good repair and married. That is very important. If you already have or have used a single battery device and you have a couple of batteries that you had for that device, you're going to need to go ahead and get an extra set of two that haven't been used individually before to use with this device. It, you do not want to take batteries of different amounts of wear and tear and pair them together for use in a multi-cell device. To turn the device on and off, it's going to be the pretty standard five clicks on and off. Five clicks to power the device on. And then you'll have all of the information displayed on the screen here. So this is currently showing that these batteries are 49% charged and it's got the resistance, which is reading at 9.99 because there is no atomizer currently attached, um, as well as the amount of seconds of the last puff you took, which is currently reading 0.00, .00 because there are no puffs since these batteries were installed into the device. Here we have your wattage, 50.0 watts, as well as an indicator of what mode you're in. The PUL stands for pulse mode, which will basically, the difference between the pulse mode and your standard mode on any other device is that it is continuing to send tiny extra pulses throughout the draw um, to provide a more powerful draw. It will, however, be a bigger drain on your batteries than the other mode, which is eco mode. Let's take a look at these other buttons and then we'll talk about how we can get to eco mode if you prefer a longer battery life. So we've got your plus and minus buttons for adjusting your output. You can press and hold and it will scroll quickly in either direction. But in the center here, you have the mode button. If I press and hold that, that will bring up your mode selection screen. And you can use the plus and minus buttons to cycle through the different modes. There are temperature control modes, as well as custom curve modes, etc. cetera. Um, however, most folks will most likely be using either the pulse mode or the eco mode in just the standard 
wattage output mode. The um, power eco mode will be more economical on your batteries. It may not feel like quite as strong of a draw, however. And then once you've selected the mode you want to go with, you can just tap that mode button again to exit out and it will be in whichever mode you had selected last. And then of course to turn the device off, it's your usual five quick clicks of the fire button, like so. But if you would not like to turn the device off, but would simply like to lock the mode and up and down buttons, you can give the fire button three quick clicks instead of five. And you'll notice a little padlock symbol popped up in the bottom right hand corner there to indicate that now I cannot adjust or change my mode, but if there was an atomizer attached, I would still be able to fire it. It's telling me check atomizer because it's not reading anything there. To unlock these buttons again to be able to adjust your settings once more, it's another three clicks on the fire button. And the padlock symbol has gone away to indicate that it is now unlocked. And we can adjust our settings as we please. That's about everything you need to know about the Vaporesso Gen 220 watt maximum output device. Happy vaping.